So, um, so today we're going to look at um, chapter 13 to 15. Um, I'm just going to see what, what is in there. Um, trust me, um, this book is solid. This book is, is, is good stuff. It's good stuff. Um, okay. So, of course, um, last two weeks, um, Pastor Sarah took us on chapter 10 to 12, and the, the general theme of those chapters, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, is generally about people have, can you call it difficulties? So people have different perspectives. Can I say these glasses? They cost, all right, better. Right, people have different perspectives, you know, and those things are formed kind of strongholds in their minds such that they cannot receive Jesus. They cannot receive the gospel. So when you preach to them, they have some kind of thinking, some kind of thoughts, some kind of perspective, some kind of worldview. Let's use woke language. Some kind of worldview, right? You know, um, or just different reasons why they feel like, you know, or for some, it's just some kind of feeling. So it, 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 it's, it's a stumbling block that hinders the word of God, as it were, from penetrating. Because the truth about the matter is this. For even the believer who is in Christ Jesus, who is born again, the Bible talks about renewing your mind. So your mind is an integral part of your work. We can't take that away. So for the unbeliever, the Bible declares that the God of this world has, you know, veiled their hearts, right? So that the light of the gospel cannot shine, right? And so for the believer also as well, even after you are born again, even after the fact that your spirit has now received the nature of Jesus Christ, you still need to renew your mind, right? Romans chapter 12, right? And we also say that in the book of Ephesians, be renewed in the spirit of your mind, right? Are you still here? All right. So the mind is an integral part of <clears throat> the spiritual work of any human being on the face of the earth, when it comes to believing in Jesus Christ, your mind is an integral part. God will not, um, God will not bypass your mind. No. Your mind is an integral part of what God wants to do. The same way God will not bypass your will. Right? You have to, so at the, for the guy who is unsaved, he will say yes to Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. For you, after you've got born again, you will say yes to the Spirit of God to be led. So at the end of the day, now you're on the day. You see that? It's a, now you're on the day. All right. Um, so we're just going to look at if we're going to look at those some of those difficulties. But before we get there, I just want to mention a few, just two things essentially that are very pivotal in our conversations with um, people when we when we preach the word. When you're having conversations with people, we are telling them about Jesus. You know, there are, there, are, there, are, there are things that are very important. One of them is the word of God. Use the word of God. Use the word of God. Use, I, know that, I know that we've said it before, but I just want to maybe, maybe, maybe drill it a bit deeper. Maybe look at it a bit more intently. And the reason is because, <clears throat> first of all, there is a pressure in society to not talk about Jesus. There's a pressure in society to not talk about, you know, the word, to not... Do not have it in your conversations. You know, we, we, last week, Pimo was given an instance where they were asked to bring, to talk about the atmospheric thing. And, you know, it just felt, even Pimo felt, it just felt like. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we must be bold about what we believe. Right? So, use the word of God. In your conversations, we will use the word of God. Now, let's, let's, and, and this is the reason why. Let's, let's look at the first scripture. Second Corinthians chapter 10. <clears throat> It'll be like, I go need that my water. Mona no vessel, no be a physio. All right, I just need to take a little water. Second Corinthians ten. Three to five. So please let's please go with me. We're gonna look at a couple of scriptures as we go. God helping us. Oh wow. Second Corinthians, second Corinthians, second Corinthians, second Corinthians. Chapter ten. <clears throat> Popular scripture. Popular scripture, popular scripture, popular scripture that you know. That in the old time, we see it as warfare scripture. Warfare. I may remember warfare. Ah, okay, oh, sorry. You guys are, uh, okay. My mother still prays warfare prayers today. <laughs> All right, Second Corinthians. Wait, ah, second. Now, wrote me. This is first. All right, Second Corinthians chapter 10. Yeah. Now, I, Paul, myself, okay, from verse 3. Let's just look at verse 3 quickly. Um, For though we walk in the flesh, 
though we walk in the flesh, right? We're in human form, we're walking on the earth. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. For pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Right? Right? So, essentially, people have arguments, people have mindsets, people have imaginations, people have stuff in their hearts or in their minds that, like I said, will stand like the lucky toget and say, where's your toe before you pass? Right? Listen, when you encounter this, the only tool you have is God's word. It's not your experience. It's not your opinion. It's not, I think, I feel... You know, the, you, you, yep, you, it, it's common lingua to say, oh, so, so what do you feel about this? What, 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 do you, what do you feel about this? What I feel is the word, sir. Yes, sir. Why? Why? Now, this is, this is the, this is the current year. Why? Because the Bible declares in Ephesians chapter 6, it says that the word of God is the sword of the spirit. Yeah. So when you speak the word, what the spirit of God will use as a tool to tear down those strongholds, is the word, which is a sword. It's a sword. He will tear it. So you cannot, you cannot be talking with your guy in the office or talking to somebody you are randomly evangelizing to on the street and just be, you know, mentioning stories and experience and, you know, just, no, it's the word. It's the word. It's the word. Because the word, the Bible says that they will know the truth and the truth will do what? Notice that the only part there is they will know the truth. All you need to do is let them know. The truth itself, uh, the truth itself. So listen to me. Common lingua, again, common, common conversation. You know, your, your opinions are valid. Everybody's quiet. Okay, you, know, you, need, you don't hear people say that? Your, your opinion, your feeling is, Shebi is valid that it's causing some people to say that they were born male. Okay, sorry, no, never mind. Leave that, leave that, leave that. I press that button a lot. Leave that, right? It's, it's valid. It's, it's valid. So you're, you know, listen, listen, listen. By language, it may be valid, but it's not true, sir. It's not the truth, sir. For the truth will set free. See, in fact, let's say, it may be valid up until, but you see, when Jesus comes, Teachers about data, they realize, ah, this thing called valid loud or. You know, when you buy stuff, they'll say valid. When they release offers, they say terms and conditions apply. Valid until, valid until you see stock, while stocks last, Abby. And it's, it's until stocks last. Once it's finished, they will say, what? oh, it becomes invalid. Oh, wow. I see what you did there. Yeah, yeah, I see what you did there. The word of God is what you will use to tear down. See, this is why it is very important for us as believers to always place God's word in our conversation. You must never be ashamed of the word of God. You don't see, don't see, don't allow anybody make you feel um, less or make you feel like you are missing out. Use the word of God. The word of God is a tool in the hands of the spirit. This is why it is called the sword of the spirit. Look, look at Hebrews chapter 4, church. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Look at it. The same way the word of God will try you. Moses, can you help me? Hebrews 4 12. The same way the word of God will try you as a believer, as a son of God, will try you and test you and prove you. It's the same, it's the, it says for 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, popular scripture. Popular scripture. Regular scripture that you've probably heard, you know, a billion dozen, 50 times. Okay, multimedia is... Hebrews, the idea. All right. For the word of God is what? Living and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and joints of spirit, and is a discerner. Is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the earth. The same way the word of God will try you as a believer, is the same way the word of God will discern their thoughts. Just, just see, see, when they are asking or saying all those things that they say, eh? just be dropping word. Your reply, word. The Bible says, the, listen, 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 look. Temptation of Jesus. What, what, what did Jesus keep saying? It is written. It is written. It is written. It is, it is written. At some point, he said, it is written again. It is written again. See, 
They say something. You say it is written. They say down. You say it is written again. You don't stop. You don't quit. You don't back down. What you have received is eternal. You must be persuaded in that. That is why it's called faith. What you have received is eternal. Is eternal. Is eternal. The scripture I spoke about in the beginning, 2 Corinthians 4. Let's just look at that. I want to, I want to, I want to show us a quick point there. 2 Corinthians 4. Hey, Jesus. Oh, time they run. Oh, God. Oh, time no money. Mm -mm. Okay, sorry. You don't listen to such songs like that. Sorry. Sorry. Hill song. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I'm a sound designer. I hear a lot of things. 2 Corinthians 4. Right? Verse 3. Okay. But even our, for you, my, my font is very tiny, that's why. All right? But even, our gospel, but even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose mind the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe. That's the problem there. They don't believe because their minds are blinded. But check this out. He said, um, Lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Look at verse 5. What does it say? You are not the message, sir. Your experience, your opinion, any opinion is not the message. We do not preach ourselves. So, yes, your experience may be valid, but you see, when, when we weigh your, your experience or your opinion or that opinion or whatever, when we wait on the word, it will be found wanting. We do not preach ourselves. What, what do we do? But Christ Jesus... Bond servants, look at verse 6. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts. Listen, the same way light shone in your hearts that you got saved, it is the same way light will shine in their hearts. For the entrance of God's word gives light and understanding to who? The simple. The simple can be you who is born again, and the simple can be an unbeliever. Did you hear that? The word is what, we, the word is what gives light. So, Ogbeni, word, word, word. Because God shone in your heart. That's the same way God will shine in their heart. And the instrument God will use is the word. Because the word, the entrance of the word gives light. And light will provide understanding. Somebody said it this way. Understanding is what is under that you can stand on. Jot things. Jot things. What? Okay, sorry. sorry. No, so, okay. The only genesis in this church. That's a millennial thing. I'm sorry, guys. Sorry, sorry. I will try to be more correct. Abito Yossi, you will teach me now. I want genesis in the house. Tolu says she's, she's not a Gen Z, by the way. Tolu Babington. So I just thought to make that public. Tolu, I still love you. Okay, I think she's in children's church, Abby. I'm safe, I'm safe. To me, you edit this portion out. <laughs> Hallelujah, glory to God. The entrance of God's word gives light. 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 So you don't back down from the word. Use the word. Use the word. All right, second two, use the name. Use the name. And how and where do you use the name? You use the name in intercession. You use the name in prayer. The reason why before you preach to somebody, or while you are preaching to someone, or after you preach to someone, or in the process of you preaching continuously, maybe the person is in the office, yeah, continuously. the reason why you are doing that, the underlaying of all of that is that you are praying for the person. You are using the name. What are you using the name to do? You are using the name to take deliverance. Take that person's mind out of the hands of the enemy, out of the grip of the enemy, out of the God of what? This age who has blinded their minds. That's, that's, that's what pray. So use the name. It says in my name they were cast out. You see that? So use the name. Use the name. You must be, I mean, in recent times, we've, 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 we've somehow, somehow, there's been a lot of emphasis on, on praying, on fellowship, on meditation, on all these things. These things are integral to your work as a believer. It's integral to our work as believers. We, you know how we used to sing then? You know, Gen Z again, you'll know this. This is the air I breathe. See, prayer, eh? meditation, eh? the word. Eh? See those things? That's the air you breathe. Yeah. Yeah. That's the air you breathe. That's from the album Worship by W. Smith. Gen Z is just for your information. Yeah. You can check it out. It's a solid album. Solid. It's one of the best worship albums ever. My, my opinion is not, it's not the word. It's just my opinion. Okay, I'll try not to yap Gen Z again after. 
Don't mind me. But those things are integral, right? So use the name. Use the name. Use the name. You are praying for that guy in your office. You are praying for that, you know, you, you, you go out, you meet someone, or we go on outreach, you meet someone, you get, the person's, you get to know the person's name, you get to know the person's number. You know, take time out. Pray for this guy. Pray for this girl. Because, see, eh, the world that we live in is a spiritual world. Though. I know it's woke to secularize, humanize. Um, I, want to, I want to coin one word now. Algorithmize everything. The spirit deal. Because even the thing that they are saying, even the physical things that we say, perhaps everything was made by the word of his power. He spoke it to existence. So at the base, at the essence of it all, at the core of it all, everything is spiritual. And is it that light or darkness? So you cannot afford to be nominal. You cannot afford to be regular. And let me just all say this before we now go to some of those difficulties that Kenyon mentioned. Which is also why Pastor Osari was saying this morning about you know, how the guy who is leading worship or who is preaching is no more spiritual than the guy who's on camera. See, let me say this to you. Mm? The reason why that is, mm, is because it's the same blood that saved all of you. You are first a believer before you're a camera guy. You are first a believer before you have mic or not have mic. You are a believer first. And you see, that one, gong, 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 is the cocoa. That in itself is the foundation. That in itself is the cross. That in itself is the essence, is the core. So at the end of the day, that's what you owe allegiance to. That's what you default to. That's what you emphasize. Right? I just thought to put that out there. Amen. Glory to God. Are you still here? Are we getting blessed? I don't, I'm just, everything we're right. I know even they talk and say, wow. Love it. All right, so, so first, 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 first set of people, there are those who have this false hope, this false sense that they are saved by their morality. In other words, they are saved by what they do. Like when God looks at me, uh-uh, one, check, two, check, three, check, four, check. I, I, imagine if the, if the marking scheme was 10, their own is 25. That's how many extra sheets. Two and a half extra sheets. Think come now. You know those guys in secondary school, or I don't know, or maybe primary school. There, there were people like that in primary school. But generally secondary school. Like, exam we start. 30 minutes into exam. Extra shit. Ah, ah. <laughs> How? <laughs> Bros. <laughs> now the same book we they read. <laughs> Trust me, there are guys like that who, in the actual sense, I'm, and we have an example, Paul. Paul was flawless before he met Jesus and Acts 9. Flawless. See, if they put you and Paul together, and know, you know rich. He was, he was really not his CV in Philippians. Should we look at it? You know they might know, but more, more look at Philippians. Is it Philippians now? I'm going to go talk. Philippians 3, right? Hmm. Oh, bless you, multimedia. Right? This is verse what? Though I may have confidence, if anyone thinks he may have confidence, I have more so. Continue. Verse 5. Circumcised on the eighth day, stock of Israel, tribe of Benjamin, Hebrew. Of, see, God is a Hebrew. See, all of you Hebrews. See, I feel like it's the same braggado that he carried when he was got born again. Because he said, I pray in tongues about all of you. It's the, it's the same thing. The same ethical is the same thing he carried. Hebrew of Hebrews, concerning law, concerning law, Pharisee, and here, continue. Concerning zeal, persecution, concerning righteousness, which is according to law, what did he say? As in, you know when you play Mortal Kombat, I know Sabi game, shall just put it out there. But when you play Mortal and you go, flawless victory. That's, that's Paul. You know those guys that you play games with, and you know that um, the way games are, you see the life, left and right, and then as blows and all that, the life goes up. If you play against Paul, now only your own goes up. Three rounds, to all the three rounds. Blameless. 
And there are guys like that that you will meet, that you have conversations with that are more. Your own, uh, they know they lie, they know they steal, they know they, they know they, they know they womanize. They know they look Instagram the way you, 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 they look. They, they don't have time, they are focused. But you see, at the end of the day, your reply is the word, Ephesians chapter 2. Mm. What does it say? Ephesians chapter 2. Mm. Right? What does it say? For by grace you've been saved through faith, not of yourselves. It has nothing to do with you. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone. See, in this thing called faith, this is called salvation. There's no, they, it's, it's, you don't, it's not by your boasting. It's not by, ah, uh, now we did it. Which is the same thing too. I mean, Pastor Sarah was talking about that thing that people uh, pray six hours, pray, oh, Benny. <laughs> not be by power. <laughs> no good, they boast. Before you got saved, that I guess is 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 now, right? It's a gift, so you can't you can't tick all the boxes and God go like ah, this is my son. Hey, no man, here please. You know is here. Remember, it doesn't work like that. It's a gift. Why? Because inherently all have sinned. You see, you're born of a woman. Adam, now your progenitor, you have sinned, sir. No verse. No verse, no verse, no verse. I know you are. So, scripture, you explain. You t- so, essentially, as a believer, th- this, this is the reason why, again, you cannot be nominal. You can't be nominal. You want to make Jesus famous? You want to preach the gospel? You can't, be, you can't just be the regular guy who just goes to church, who likes, you know how, I want to shake some people now. You know how, um, they say I'm always shaking tables. Is that true? You know how some people will go and say, no, I, I love that church. I just love the choir. They're so, you know, I, I love the church because I, I, I really like the choir. I like the worship, you know. Now, that's why you chose to join the church. Ah, okay. No comment. More live and dear. That's not my message, but just collect your sob, right? So it's, 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 you can't afford to be nominal. You must know the scriptures. As a believer, you must know the scriptures. You must know the scriptures. You must know the scriptures. Jesus, Jesus was speaking to who? The Pharisees. He said, you err because you do not know the scriptures. You err because you do not know the scriptures. So it's not about ticking boxes. So for guys who are very moralistic, very, you know, um, I, I do what I'm supposed to do. God cannot fault me. No, no, no. You are already faulted from the beginning. You are born a woman, you are already faulted. No, don't be angry. And then this thing called faith is a gift. It's a gift, it's a gift, it's a gift, it's a gift. It's a, that's why it's a standing. It's a standing that you have come into by reason of receiving Jesus. He says you have become the righteousness of God. You were not that before. Right? Right? Are we still here? There are those who say that. How can it, I hear this one a lot. How can a God of love send people to hell? And their emphasis is that word, love. So in other words, is, for me, this one is emotional blackmail. See, eh? God doesn't send people to hell. I hope you know. In fact, that love that you are talking about, that love is why Jesus came. Simple scripture. See, you don't even need to go deep. John 3. God so loved the world that he what gave. It's because it's love that made God to provide an option called redemption. It's love that made Jesus to live his glory and become your substitute. Are you still here? So God doesn't send people to hell. Hell was designed for people who refuse the love of God. Who refuse the mercy of God. And of course, who, who have, who, of course, the number one person is, is, is Satan. So ideally speaking, ideally speaking, the only people or the only persons or the only entities <laughs> who should be in hell why is that? It's only Roger said that said it. He's the devil. Ideally. Because he said, he said, I will arise now, I will be like God. You know, this this God. We go be mates. No, sir. So hell is for people who refuse, who refuse the love of God, who who do who say in the, because like we said in the beginning, God cannot override your will. 
Are you still here? God cannot override your will. So it's people who choose. Like this God, I don't want time. I don't, I don't send him. No. Those are the people who go to hell. So it's not that God said, you, Torife, go to hell. No. 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 There's, there's one farm implement called go to hell, Abi. I still remember. Uh, uh, she, she, a student. Yeah. Gege. Right? So hell is for people who have made a choice, like Satan, to stay in unbelief and disregard God's authority. Mm. But love is saying choose life. Choose health. Choose peace. That's what love is saying. There are those... So, so there are those. There are those who say, who say things like, "I feel, I, I feel like I'm all right. I feel like, I feel like I'm good." Ah, you feel? Ah. You know this feeling problem is the problem. Yeah. If you understand, you understand. <laughs> some people don't understand. You know, some people on Instagram they only look at cars, like you know, or Aston Martin, you know, Jaguars, just cars. Mm. This feeling is the problem. I just feel like, I just feel like, mbao, mbao. that feeling God that you are saying you feel is, is God that, <laughs> God was not that gave you capacity to feel. I just feel like, no, it's not by feelings, it's by faith. It's faith over feelings. We, for we walk by faith and not by sight. It's, it's faith over feelings. The same thing applies even as a believer. It's faith over feelings. 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 So you cannot feel like you're okay. You cannot feel like you're all right. Like, I'm good. I did all right. I'm fine. No, sir, you're not fine. No. The only way you can be fine is if you receive the love of God in your heart. The only way you can be fine is if you receive the sacrifice of Jesus. That's the only way you can be fine. It's not by feelings. It's not by what you feel. Nah. Nah. No. Nah. So let's engage people. Engage them with the word. Engage them with the word. Engage their names. Engage their hearts, their minds. Engage it in prayer. Very important. Are we getting blessed? So let's move on. Let's move on. Now this one, eh, I, I really like this, this portion where we get to. This is, this, is chapter, this is chapter 14 now. I really like this, this portion. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Can you make a very important point? How that um, there are people who have, you know, let me, let me, let me read. Should I get the the words right? Okay. All right. Okay, thank you, Jesus. Mm. Mm. Can you make an interesting point how that backsliding is not, is not scriptural? Now it's the same when I read the book. When I read it, I was like, okay. Food for thought. You know how we've always said that, ah, that guy, you don't backslide. For, for, for Kenya, I think the point he was trying to make was, see, the fact that someone, you know, maybe was born again or was saved and for the last 10 years has refused everything God is, is, it's really about the fact that the guy has broken his fellowship with God. At the end of the day, God still looks at him as his child. So for Kenyon, it's about, um, it's, it's, it's more about the fact that once fellowship is restored, the relationship continues. It just picks up. So, if you vex your papa, I know there are some extreme fathers, but if you vex your papa, right, but at the end of the day, you are still his child. You see that? You are still his child at the end of the day. So, whether we agree with that or not, that's not my issue, but the core, the emphasis, which really at the end of the day is really what, is really the essence, is the fact that when there is broken, broken fellowship, what we need to encourage folks like that to do is just pick it up. 
So you've not prayed for two years, you've not prayed for two weeks, you've, you've gone far, you've done, it doesn't matter. Just pick it up. And there are scriptures that you use to encourage people like that, right? But before we get into all that, there's, there's something I want to really emphasize, which is the base of what I just said, right? The base of what I just said. Revelation, Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Very important. This was a joy point yesterday. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Bless, I go change this Bible. The font is so tiny. But I really enjoy it. All right. Romans chapter 5. Are you here? Romans chapter 5. It says, therefore, having been justified by faith. Having been justified by faith. What is the next line? We have peace with God through Jesus Christ. You have peace with God. So, for people who, who have no desire to come back, or people who desire to come back but don't know how, see, explain to them first. You see that time when you, when you gave your life to Jesus? You've been, you were justified by faith, and you have peace with God. So, in other words, God is not fighting with you. God is not hang, angry with you. A lot of times, that is usually one of the first, that's usually one of the mind blocks. The fact that people feel like, God, he for me. No. You have peace with God. You have peace with God. Having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom, now that is through Jesus, through whom also we have access. Ah, the room is quiet. You're supposed to shout today. We have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. You have access. So you've not prayed for two weeks. It's okay. You have access. Don't stay in your prayerlessness. That's not what we're saying. Don't stay down. Don't stay feeling guilty. Don't stay ashamed. Don't stay feeling like, you know, ah, ah, ah. Mm -mm. You have access. You have peace with God. The other day, my daughter was like, so God, if we... I didn't hear questions nowadays. Oh, Jesus Christ. She's going to be four in four days. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. She was like, so, so, so if we disobey God, God will be angry with us. I said, no. God doesn't like what you did. God doesn't be old sin, but God is not angry with you. God is not angry with you. No. Why should he? Jesus has died. You have peace with God. I'm saying, I don't know how else to say it. You have peace with God. I don't know who that is for. You have peace with God. And through that same Jesus Christ, you have access by faith into grace in which you now stand. Check the next line. Continue. What does it say? And rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Mm. Now the line I like, but go to verse 5. It says, for hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured into our hearts. But the Holy Ghost has been given to us. Love is in your heart. What you have received by reason of receiving Jesus, right, is the nature of God. Love has, is in your spirit. It's in your heart. He shed a body in your heart. So yes, you, you acted against your nature, but your nature has not changed, sir. Mm. That's the problem. You're like, ah, oh, it's okay. See, like, like, like Pastor Sarah was saying, godly repentance is godly repentance. Let it lead to what? Repentance. Just right there, do what you need to do and move. It says that we have an advocate with the Father. Hmm. It's called the present ministry of Jesus. We have an advocate with the Father. We have an advocate with the Father. So someone is talking to, to God about you. So stop feeling like you are... No, 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 no. Get back up. You have access. Get back up. You have access. So this is what, we talk, this is what you tell people who feel like, you know, they, they, you know they, they've, 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 they've broken their fellowship with God. They've broken their relationship. No, the relationship never broke. It's your father. Is your father. How do I know the story of the prodigal son? See, 
The guy that was a, the guy that said, "Son, uh, Father, give me everything. Let me go." Hmm? Went. Should we look at it? Let's look at it. Let's look at it. Luke fifteen. Luke fifteen. Luke fifteen. Luke fifteen. Quickly. Luke fifteen. I want to make two important points there. Well, I don't know. Luke fifteen. Right. Luke fifteen. By verse 17, what did, what did guy say? He said, but he came to himself. Someone is coming to their self today. Yeah. He came to himself. He said, how many of my father's higher servants have bread enough to spare? And I perish in hunger. Right? It was like, you know what? You know this thing of, I'm not worthy. I'm not. It's okay. It's all right. But by the time he met the father, what happened? 22. But the father said to the servants, Bring. The room is quiet. Bring the best robe. Put it on him. Put a ring in his hand and sandals on his feet. This is the way the father looks at you. Let me explain. You see, while he was meandering, while he was, this is the way the father looked at him. The best robe. It's called the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Allah, Fala, Kopala, Vaihaya. Put it on him. Put a ring in his hand. A ring. What does that symbolize? Authority. The guy who was... Uh, the room is quiet. Ah, ah. This is why it's a family affair. The devil cannot come to you and say nothing. Yeah. Put a ring in his hand. Aya, baya. Sandals on his feet. Glory to God. 28. Second song. But he was angry. These are for those who feel like they've been, you know that guy in the beginning, moral. But this one now is not the one inside who's born again or is a son. You feel like you've been any, I've been walking, you not even give me goat. Two things, only two things, only two things. Only two things was what the father said to him. What did the father say? 31. First thing. He said, but he said to him, son, you are always with me. You have proximity. But you see, your proximity did not give you sense. Why? He said, all that I have is yours. All that I have is yours. All. So both the guy who don't go to PlayStation outside and the guy who has PlayStation inside the house, all that the father has is yours. It's yours. This is why you cannot be down when there is broken fellowship. No, just, just pick it up. Pick it up. You need to confess. Confess whatever it is you need to confess. The Bible says that he is faithful and just. First John 1 John 1.9. He is faithful and just. 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 Revelations 19. The Bible declares. He calls him faithful and true. He is faithful and just. 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 He's faithful and just. He's faithful and just. See the character of the father. Look at the character of the father. Look, look, look. Look at the character of the father. He's faithful and just. He's faithful and just. So let the guy who, who has broken fellowship but says, you know what? I don't, I don't want to come back. I don't desire to come back. See, let him understand. See, eh? See. This is what you have in the Father, the best room. Ring. Sig you have the best privileges. So why wouldn't you want to come back? Why? 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 Ooh. Glory to God. Mm. The only person who can break the relationship you have with God is God. That's the this that's the cross of Kenyon's position when he says you can't really say you can't even find the word backsliding in scripture. 
the only person who can break the relationship you have with God is God. And God is not a man that he should lie. He's not the son of man that he should repent. And in Jesus, God has said, you are mine. You belong to me. So God cannot go back on his word. Are you still here? So God breaking his relationship with you is, is God going against his character. Are you still here? Is God going against his character? And that cannot happen. So you, that relationship with God is intact. The problem was that fellowship just, fellowship communication, 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 broke down. Just speak it up. So the guy who hasn't been to church in 10 years, it's okay. He can come back in an instant, in an instant, in an instant. You've not prayed for two weeks. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't stay there. Or we not say you should stay there. Right? But you, can, you are back in an instant. In an instant. In an instant. Hallelujah to Jesus. Let me just wrap up with this. Hmm. Mm. Um, first John, I believe. First John. First John. First John. First John chapter 3. Yeah. First John chapter 3. What is song back in the day? I don't know if it was a mainstream song. When I say mainstream, okay, so when you hear the word mainstream, it means popular. Mainstream doesn't mean it's bad. First. Let me put that first there because people look at me now. Doesn't mean it's bad. First. Mainstream, by definition, means it is popular. Right? So, why this song back then? Um, so, for example, to make it, ex- to explain clearly, Bonner Boy is mainstream. Does that make sense? Everybody's quiet. Okay, I say, okay, Bonner Boy is wrong. We are sorry. Nathaniel Bass is mainstream. Is that better? Yes. Ah, Jesus Christ. Oh. It doesn't mean I'm endorsing Bonner Boy. It's just, it's just an example. Okay, let's leave that, right? So there was this song we had then. Um, Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Is it mainstream? You know it? Okay. I just wanted to check. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us. Okay, I have five minutes. Therefore, the world does not know us because he did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God. This is the mindset you must work with. See, he bestowed his love upon you. You've received the love. Now you are a child of God. Maybe now why you even sing that song, Seth Tumshi. Now you are a child of God. Now. Now, 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 now you are a child of God. So you did not read your Bible for three days. Now you are a child of God. Are we saying you should not read your Bible for three days? No. But it just happened. You went against the nature that you have inside. See, now you are a child of God. You see, this knowledge... Ah, my best example. My daughter is four. Four days. And she likes hugs. She likes being carried. I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, for crying out loud, you are not the young man. You're not the baby. But she knows if he stretch and make her no carry on. You don't understand. Her birth certificate is Awan Biogbo. That's my surname, in case you don't know. Why? Because she's my child. Now, I may have told her like yesterday, put your tab away. I said it like 10 times. Jesus, help me, Lord. But this morning she said, Daddy, carry me. You will carry. Why will you not carry? Why? Now! So the relationship is intact. The relationship is intact. The relationship is intact. Now! 
now. Can we just bless the Lord in the room? Can we bless the Lord in the room? Can we bless the Lord in the room? Can we bless the Lord in the room? Father, we give you glory. <laughs> now we are children of God. Father, we praise you. Father, we honor you. We thank you for your word. 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 We will place your word in our lips. We will place your word in our lips. When we meet that woke guy, that woke girl, our reply will be the word of God. Yeah. We will place the word of God on our lips. It will be, our, it will be in our conversations. It will be in our conversations. The word of God will be our meditation. We will speak the word of God aloud in our rooms and on the rooftops. In our rooms and on the rooftops. In the name of Jesus. When we declare the word of God, it will not come to people in excellence of speech or the wisdom of men. But will come in a demonstration of spirit and of power. That their faith may not rest on the wisdom of men, but on the power of God, but on the spirit of God. Lord, we give you glory in the room. We thank you for your word. 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 Your word that causes change. Your word that causes deliverance. Your word that causes freedom. We give you glory in the room. We give you glory in the room. Blessed be God forevermore. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.